Just one minute ago, Mount Etna unleashed something no scientist can explain. A fragment so alien, it survived 1,200 degrees and glows electric blue under ultraviolet light. Now, Europe's most active volcano isn't just erupting, it's rewriting the laws of geology. Could this be the same force that triggered a prehistoric collapse and tsunami? The answers, and the threat, are still spreading. Wind tears at the crater rim. Dr. Lucia Ferrante steadies herself on jagged basalt, visor streaked with ash, every movement deliberate. Her boots crunch over still warm scoria as the ground vibrates beneath her, a constant reminder that Etna is anything but dormant. The air, thick with sulfur and grit, stings her eyes. She calls out a reading, the response crackles back through static, barely audible over the low roar from the vent below. The team advances, instruments slung from their harnesses. Ferrante's field notebook, smudged with dust, records a single line. Instruments blind, readings maxed, then dead. The sensor array designed to withstand volcanic extremes now flashes error codes. Gamma counters and dosimeters, usually reliable, have all flatlined. No one speaks for a moment. The silence is heavier than the ash. Standard protocol demands redundancy. Ferrante orders a backup unit deployed, but the result is the same. Another error, another blank screen. She exchanges a look with her technician, who shrugs, sweat beating on his brow despite the cold wind. Every sample is tagged, double bagged, logged with GPS, time and temperature. The process is methodical, but the atmosphere is tense. Each minute spent exposed on the rim increases the risk of gas surges, of collapse, of something else they cannot quantify. A chunk of material, still faintly glowing beneath the dusting of ash, is pried loose with tongs. Ferrante's gloved hands never touch it directly. Even through the suit, she feels a tingling, like static. The fragment is sealed in a lead-lined container, marked with a fluorescent orange tag. Unknown, do not open. As the team retreats, Ferrante's radio chirps with an urgent update. Air quality dropping, visibility near zero. She signals for immediate extraction. The samples, now secured in a steel case, are handed off to the logistics officer waiting at the exclusion zone perimeter. Every step away from the crater feels like a small victory but the unease remains. Ferrante glances back at the summit, its plume now pulsing with unnatural light, and wonders if the data will ever make sense. In the sterile hush of the laboratory, the steel case rests on a bench, its fluorescent tag pulsing gently under the overhead lights. Technicians gather, gloves snap tight, faces drawn. The lead-lined seal is broken with a practiced motion, but as the inner container opens, a cold blue glow leaks across the stainless steel. The fragment inside is small, rough-edged, its surface dusted with volcanic glass. Yet under ultraviolet light it ignites with a brightness that startles even the most seasoned staff. The photoluminescence is not a soft shimmer, but an intense, almost electric flare, casting shadows on the lab walls. No one speaks for a moment. A junior analyst, eyes wide, checks the wavelength against the spectrometer. The chart climbs, peaking well beyond any known volcanic mineral. Standard protocol calls for a melting test. The furnace is set to 1,200 degrees Celsius, the upper limit for basaltic lava. The sample is placed inside a crucible, temperature steadily rising. After an hour, the fragment remains unchanged. No softening, no bubbling, not even a change in the spectral signature. A second test follows pushing the furnace to its maximum. The result is the same. The lead technician notes the anomaly in the log, voice flat but hands trembling. Volcanic rocks from Etna have never withstood such heat without breaking down. This one appears untouched. Mass spectrometry is next. The machine whirs, then stalls. The data output is erratic. Ratios of isotopes that do not match any cataloged mineral from Etna or from any volcanic system in the global database. The numbers scroll past, oxygen, silicon, trace elements. But then a cluster of peaks with no known signature. The technician checks the calibration, repeats the run, double checks the sample ID. The results persist. 
Within hours, word spreads through the building. Lab staff gather in small knots, voices low. The director orders all data archived and encrypted. A call goes out to partner institutes in Germany and France, requesting independent analysis. No one is willing to speculate aloud, but the silence in the corridors is heavy. What began as curiosity has sharpened into something colder. The evidence demands answers, but for now, only questions multiply. Across Europe, inboxes pinged almost in unison. In Berlin, Paris, and Zurich, labs that had received fragments from Aetna found the same legal document attached. A non-disclosure agreement stamped urgent, demanding signatures within hours. The language was identical, down to the clause forbidding discussion of uncharacterized mineralogical phenomena with anyone outside a designated list. Senior staff at the Max Planck Institute hesitated, forwarding the file to legal. In Geneva, a postdoc leaked a screenshot to a private chat, only to delete it seconds later. At the French National Center for Scientific Research, a group of researchers gathered in a stairwell, whispering about the pre-print they had just pulled offline. By midday, three pending publications vanished from open access servers. A handful of whistleblowers, careful to shield their identities, described pressure from both institutional and governmental channels. The message was clear. Silence, or risk losing access, not just to the Aetna samples, but to future funding and collaboration. Within 24 hours, consensus was no longer scientific. It was enforced. Data requests stalled, emails went unanswered, and the usual chatter on academic forums fell quiet. The story, once confined to labs and field teams, now simmered beneath the surface, waiting for a breach. Salvatore Romano stands at the edge of his vineyard, boots sinking into ash that was once fertile soil. The air tastes of sulfur and burnt earth. Three times in 72 hours, the authorities have ordered evacuations, then reversed them, each announcement more frantic than the last. Neighbors pack their cars with hurried bundles, family photos, a crate of lemons, a single suitcase, while others linger, eyes fixed on the mountain's flickering crown. Each hour brings new rumors, toxic gases, strange lights, officials arguing behind closed doors. Romano hesitates, torn between the vines he's tended for decades and the rising fear in his daughter's voice as she coughs through her mask. By the time the final advisory comes, the grape clusters are shrouded in gray dust, leaves curling, the harvest already lost. The streets fill with a slow-moving procession of headlights, punctuated by the wail of distant sirens. In the local square, families cluster around radios, straining for news. None arrives. The silence from officials grows heavier, as if the mountain's secrets have swallowed their words. For Romano and his neighbors, the cost is measured not just in lost crops, but in trust, eroded with every unanswered question and every acre abandoned to ash. At 317, the gamma sensor array at the southeast flank of Etna shut down without warning. The last entry in the raw log records a spike, numbers climbing, then an abrupt error code, system offline. Zurich technicians, reviewing the data hours later, flagged the event as external overload, not a technical malfunction. The backup unit, deployed minutes after, never registered a reading. Every attempt to recalibrate failed. Within the hour, Italian civil protection officials sealed the files. Satellite overlays, usually updated in near real time, vanished from public dashboards. Requests for access met only with automated replies citing national security concerns. Rumors traced the path of a courier moving through Milan, then on to Zurich, carrying a sealed container marked hazardous. The timeline narrows. By dawn, the Zurich lab's own instruments suffered unexplained blackouts during unauthorized tests. One technician later described a blue-white flash, then total data loss. Geologic models, quietly circulated among senior analysts, compared deformation patterns from the eruption to those recorded before Etna's prehistoric flank collapse. The parallels are unnerving. With every unanswered question, the sense of concealed peril grows. The official record remains silent, leaving only fragments and gaps where explanations should be. On June 12, 2025, a team led by Dr. Lucia Ferrante recovered a glowing specimen from Mount Etna's crater. 
a material that resisted melting at 1,200 degrees Celsius and emitted an electric blue-white light under ultraviolet testing. Laboratory reports confirmed isotopic ratios that matched no known volcanic rock. Within 24 hours, identical non-disclosure agreements reached labs across Europe, and at 317, a gamma sensor monitoring Etna's summit failed. Residents of nearby villages faced three official evacuation orders in just 72 hours, marking the largest local disruption since the volcano's last major collapse over 7,000 years ago. Despite analysis by multiple teams and a growing archive of classified files, the origin and nature of the substance remain unconfirmed. No peer-reviewed studies or public data have yet explained the anomaly. For now, scientists and officials cite safety and national security as reasons for silence. As of June 2025, the true story behind Mount Etna's most mysterious eruption is still locked away leaving a region and a world waiting for answers.